Welcome back to the talk tonight. Happening right now, the Parks and Recreation Committee of the Syracuse Common Council is meeting about how to keep a better eye on the problem of well, dogs and animal cruelty, cats in Syracuse. You know, buying a dog license animal control software, there's been a, a grant now to help out with that, uh, with some spay and neutering opportunities, potentially. We've seen more cases of abused animals in the city like these. This is the one we reported on yesterday. Several pit bulls from three different locations found malnourished and uh, hungry and hurting and very happy to have some warm human companionship. In fact, Megan Coleman, you were there yesterday at DeWitt Animal Hospital as they were brought these dogs out to be shown. And it was so sad to see. I mean, no dog should ever be treated like this. You know, no human being, no animal. It was really just heartbreaking to see. And the problem is, is that everyone wants to do something. These types of stories always get people so fired up and, you know, there's all this outrage and they want something to change. But it's really hard. I mean, it's a very difficult task. We have a part-time animal control officer, or uh, cruelty investigator now. With the Syracuse Police Department. With the Syracuse right. Police Department. Um, and, and it's so wonderful that they have her, but you know, will, is there any chance that she'll become full-time? Is there going to be a big task force behind this? Probably not, which Probably is tough. Probably not. You had Stephanie Higgins from the pit crew on last night on CBS yeah, 5. Yeah, they're encouraged. They, they yeah. don't paint, um, you know, at the, at, the, at the onset, they don't paint a terribly bleak picture of where they believe we're going as a city when it comes to these problems. But we do have a tremendous issue, particularly with pit bulls in the city. Uh, we've got backyard breeding going on, people who can make a quick buck. Um, likely, they're probably drug dealers as well, so they do this sort of on the side. You can sell a, a pit bull for 200 bucks to somebody, and, and where is that dog winding up? Probably not in a great, a great situation. Uh, there's dog fighting going on in the there's city of, of Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Organized dog fighting. Again, it's primarily gangs organizing this stuff. These dogs are left on the streets abandoned. And last year, we just learned out of this meeting real quickly that some 500 dogs were put down. Well, and that, that actually, in the city, believe from it or not, that's actually an improved number. In 2011, there were 950 pit oh, bulls goodness. that yeah. went to the De DeWitt Animal Hospital and had to be put down because mm -hmm. it's unusual that they get adopted. Sometimes they can't be because they've been made to be aggressive. Sometimes their health is so poor, and other times it's just hard to find a home that's right for a, for a pit bull who's been put or in Someone willing to take a chance right. on that you know, animal. It does happen from time to time. Mm -hmm. One thing I think that needs to happen, uh, and, and our, the healthy pet clinics that we started with the Shamrock Animal Fund and the Central New York Animal Welfare Coalition, which was a broad group of animal advocacy groups that came together initially, which has changed considerably since the onset or the concept mm -hmm. of that. But what, what we found with that was that groups working together instead of pushing against each other got to the point where we had these clinics started underway and now they've continued. And, and I'm actually concerned with uh, some of what I heard out of today's meeting and, and from the Animal Alliance of Greater Syracuse where they're hypercritical of the SPCA and the work that they're doing there that they don't feel like they're doing enough to investigate cases of animal cruelty. I, I think that's the wrong approach. The right approach would be get everybody to the table. It can't just be one group who thinks they have the answer. It's got to be all the groups. Otherwise, it's, this is not going to be enough resources to get it done. And it can't yeah. be a turf war no. among and the it, groups who are, who are trying to do good. We'll get nowhere if that if that's how it's how it's going to you be. You know, the other interesting thing that came out of my conversation with the folks at the DeWitt mm -hmm. Animal Hospital yesterday is they said that people are really scared to come forward. They know that these things are going on yeah. in their neighborhoods, in their backyards, in these garages um, next door to them, but they're so fearful of the people who live next door to them that they don't even want to come and speak out. Yeah, that is a shame, and, and it, mm. it, it speaks directly to the quality of neighborhoods. Uh, if, you, if you're living in a, a nice suburb or a nice neighborhood in the city, you don't have dog fighting. You don't have as much animal cruelty, but if you get into poor neighborhoods, heavy rental properties, abandoned homes, the number spikes, mm, and it sure. becomes quite literally the tail wagging the dog, the dog wagging the tail, both make it, each problem makes it worse, so. It's no secret which corners, corner pockets of the city are, are the most, uh, are feeling this the most acutely. Yeah. It's or the a, animals and it's are feeling this the most And it's relevant acutely. to quality of life for the animals and for people who live yeah. there too. The talk tonight.